Hello my friends, welcome to part 86 of my Horizon Zero Dawn full blind playthrough on the PlayStation 5. Uh, we're playing on ultra hard difficulty and guys in the last episode we completed what I think is the final, I think, main quest in Frozen Wilds. Guys, it was epic. <laughs> I had such a great time with that. Um, Okay, aside from the traversal, which I'm not a huge fan of, and that's with any game, if it's, you know, too long of traversal, I get kind of bored a little bit. But um, but anyway, aside from that, guys, the the fights were incredible, and we met our first Fire Claw. Now, like I said, guys, I hope it's not just a one-off, because I would love to fight it again. I hope they actually spawn into the game uh, well on the map you know much like scorches and you know uh frost claws guys epic fight i really enjoyed myself however something really sad happened though Araya died i didn't actually expect that i thought she was going to be an invincible npc <laughs> unfortunately she sacrificed herself to save um the spirit which we now know is cyan which is an ai that was there to govern a project called Firebreak, which was to prevent Yellowstone's volcano from erupting. Um, but yeah, it was it was epic. I really enjoyed it, guys. I hope you did too. Now, this is a shout out for I think. Sorry, guys, if I get the names uh, incorrect. Okay, there's obviously Eddie freaking Munson, Pan Guy, and Keslik. Um, I hope I'm saying that correctly. You guys have insisted <laughs> that I need to come back here to the hunting grounds. And apparently... Okay, I found the Chieftain's Trial. A lot of fun. It was great trying to figure it out. But it was very difficult. I mean, it was crushingly difficult. And it took me about two hours to work out strategy or to get the um, uh, time. I think it was below four minutes and 30 seconds. I really struggled, but guys, I enjoyed it. Anyway, now you guys are telling me there's another quest at the hunting grounds, and here we are. This is Ikri. It's good to see her. I'm glad she's okay. But apparently, guys, you said this is even more difficult than the Chieftain's Trial. I'm a little bit scared, but guys, let's give it a go. And by the way, yes, we are going to go back to uh, Araya's Retreat. Um, we got to meet up with Aratuk, but guys, I need to see what this is. I'm pretty certain we've done what we could in in the actual quest, meaning... Okay, there you go, look. Return to Aurea's retreat to speak to Aratuk and Cyan. I don't think there's going to be a boss fight or anything, so... So let's speak to Ikri and let's get this moving. Training again so soon, Ikri? Never met a hunter who wished they'd trained less. I guess I'm not in any hurry to go back to Benor. Not yet. Do you want to talk about it? What happened at the glacier? No, I'd rather fight through it. Take it in my teeth and be left with the taste of determination. How about you, Aloy? Up for a challenge? <laughs> guys, I'm scared. Listen, you guys have been telling me this is um going to be really crushingly difficult. But um, anyway, let's uh, change the subject. <laughs> let's talk about the white teeth. I'm procrastinating, guys. So you know. I told the White Teeth what you asked. What about my Lynn? Did they accept her? They did. As they should. She was strong. Really, I only feel pride for her. As for me, I always wanted to be a snow ghost. Free to do what I will. Okay. Oh, all right, here we go, guys. What kind of challenge? A competition? No, together. We'll use the hunting grounds, but my rules. Lovak's fine with it. She doesn't seem fine with it. <laughs> my sling, your bow. You draw the machines to me so I can freeze them. And then you hit them when they're brittle. We'll fight until we run out of machines or you run out of arrows. That's the challenge. Honestly, I'm more used to fighting alone. And I'm more used to fighting alongside another. So put your spear beside mine, why don't you? Okay... She's going to freeze enemies. We take as little arrows as possible. Okay, this doesn't sound too bad, but, but we'll see. We'll see. You freeze them, I shoot them. Doesn't seem so hard. Really? Then you'll only need half as many arrows as I'd planned to give you. Wait. It shows I trust your aim. Oh, no. Trust mine. 
You've really got to work for a Banuke challenge, don't you? That's the spirit. Come on, let's drop off our gear and go. Aloy, lure the machines back here and I'll freeze them. Don't worry, I don't miss. Then I target them when they're vulnerable. Got it. Um. Oh, you're kidding. Guys, you're kidding. I was trying to go into my, um... Oh, guys, are you shitting me? Is this all I get? Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, guys, I didn't actually want to be in this outfit. All right. I can't use my spear. <laughs> what? Guys, what the hell? Okay, I've only got 30... I've only got 30 arrows. Um, these are the shitty ones, though. The hunter arrows, whatever they're called. No. Okay, guys, sorry. Okay, okay, guys, guys. <laughs> Let me just take a deep breath. Right, we've only got 30 arrows. And from what I saw there, 20 hard points. Is that correct? That. That's weird. And five fire arrows, guys, what the? Wow, okay, all right. Okay, we need to shoot weak points then. Okay, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm stuck. Crap. Guys, where's my potions? <laughs> what the hell? Guys, this, this is crap. This is so shit. Wait, hey. Uh, what just happened? I don't even know what happened, guys. Wait, hold on, hold on. Give me a sec. Sure. You know where to find me. All right. Unless Lobo oh. throws me out for making the other hunters look bad. All right, whatever. Okay. Wow. Okay, guys, uh, let me speed up the footage. I need to heal up. <laughs> Give me a sec. Hey, guys, we are back. Um, You know what? I had an idea. Sorry, while I was just waiting there, I was thinking about something. I was going to go into Shield Weaver, but let me try Nora's Silent Hunter. Look, I don't know if this, <laughs> this is going to work. Um, so we're going to go for our second attempt now. What I could do, that's why I love this um, outfit. It's so good, guys. I could, there was a lot of grass. And guys, I wonder, actually, sorry, just quickly, we're using these hunting grounds. So this is where the Scorchers were. Look, Shooting there's actually... Oh, shut up, Aloy. I'm not trying to use weapons. I'm trying to zoom in. Okay, there are some log piles. Do you reckon I could... I could use them to kill all the scrappers, maybe? Anyway, let's try again, guys. Are you up for more? Do you ever get to... I'll rest someday. Ah, shut up. <laughs> let's go again. We can do better. I was thinking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last. We make fewer... Good plan. Oh, okay. Lure All right, guys. Back here and I'll freeze them. Okay, fine. Don't worry, I don't miss. Then All right, guys. When they're vulnerable. Got it. Oh crap! I don't know if this is gonna work. Oh damn it! Okay, so let's do this again. So five arrows only. Wow, five arrows. Sorry, thirty out of sixty shitty arrows, and only twenty-five hard points. And guys, I don't believe it's just these scrappers. I'm sure there's gonna be other machines as well. Now, if this doesn't work out, we'll just go into Shield Weaver because we are getting <laughs> absolutely ganked by these um, scrappers. Okay, okay, fine. So, how do I do this? Okay, if I reveal myself... Oi, bitch! <laughs> okay, wait. No, no, don't turn red, please! Okay, now, will Ikri shoot this scrapper if... Oh, dude, really? Oh, guys, is he being that awkward? No, I don't think Ikri's going to shoot him. Oh, my God, that's so annoying, guys. Yep, I can see this is going to be bullshit. I can see it already. And I've got no spear. I can't actually stealthily kill them. I just want to see if um, he gets close, will, will Ikri actually attack him? Oh, wow, guys. Okay, no, they want it to be chaotic and pure mayhem. All right, fine. Fine. Let's let's just do that. Hello. <laughs> okay, here we go, guys. No choice. So I'll use these arrows. Not that I'm going to save hard points because I don't know. Wow. Um, can you help me, Akri? Jesus. Can you freeze it? Wow, guys. Okay. No, we're going to need Shield Weaver. I, I'm trying to aim for its... <laughs> ah, shit. Okay, don't worry, guys. 
Uh, we'll try again. All right, guys, let's switch into Shield Weaver. Uh, so we can't do anything stealth-wise. I, I, I hope you guys understood what I was trying to do there, but it failed. Um, I was trying to lure the scrappers over. Maybe Ikri can freeze them, and then I can pot shot them from the bushes, but that didn't work. So, whatever. Are you up to tea? Shut right. up. Let's go again. <laughs> now, All right. Plan. Okay, here we go. Lure the machines back here and I'll freeze them. All right. Don't worry, I don't miss. Then I target them when they're vulnerable. Got it. Ikri, your challenge sucks, man. Oh, okay. But even okay. Come on, please. Okay, good. Oh crap. Wait. Oh guys, it's not even a power shot, bro. Oh, I missed. Damn it. How many arrows? Oh god. <laughs> okay, guys. Oh wait, there's no time limit. <gasps> Piss off. Okay, guys, there's no time limit, so that's not a bad thing. Hey, can you move? Jesus Aloy. <laughs> Okay, I'm just aiming for the weak points, guys. Okay, wait. All right. So what I need to do is just, just be patient, really. I can't really rush. Can't even kill him. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Uh. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> okay, not yet, not yet. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hmm. I don't know, guys. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. I've only got 21. Well, that's not bad. 21 arrows. I thought it would be a lot worse than that. Wait until he's frozen. So we need to go after him, but his bodies are right there. Oh, the arsehole. <laughs> okay. I really hate that fucking laser. <laughs> I really hate it. No, I'm wasting an arrow. Oh, God. Oh, God, no, please. <laughs> All right. Did that not work? Oh. Wait, wait, he's really weak. Uh, this one's nearly dead, guys. He's limping. On, give me a real challenge. Yeah, don't kind of encourage them. You're not the one. Oh, crap. <laughs> You're not the one that's actually. Wait. Oh, damn, he lost his freaking frozen status. God damn it. Okay, guys, um, I have to admit, this isn't... Actually, I don't want to say anything. I'll, I'll tell you later. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll tell you later. Okay. Right, which... I can't tell which one is the one that's limping. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Oh, you bitch. How? Oh my god! Okay, that's my fault. I'm losing patience. No, oh, guys, really. 
You know what guys, I hate it when Aloy gets stuck on a pebble like you're sliding and if there's a pebble on the floor, she'll just stop. Oh wow, okay, oh that's nice. Right, here we go, here we go. Oh my god! <laughs> but we must be patient, we must be patient. I uh, don't know where his weak point is, it's probably there. I don't know which one is the one that was wounded. I I don't know. Oh no, that's my bad. I gotta be impatient. I've only got nine arrows, guys. So I may have to break into the hard points. And I've only got 25 of those. <laughs> Alright. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. I have to admit, I'm sucking at the moment because I'm getting impatient. That's my fault. That's a me problem. guys not looking good uh, i think he was limping but i can't tell i'm not 100 percent sure uh, dead yes okay right we did it we did uh wait he's limping too yes ikri please freeze him please for love of love of god please <laughs> yes okay i don't know where to shoot him all right two arrows left <laughs> god damn it guys <laughs> this is Quite funny, actually. But anyway. Okay, one arrow left. Oh, he's dead. Okay, guys, no choice. Hey, hey, can you... My stick drift. Sorry, guys. In case you don't know, I've got stick drift on my controller. It really sucks. Yes! Awesome. Now what? A four out of five. Oh, guys! Fire arrows. Uh, as soon as I saw grazers, check it out. Okay, watch this. Please work. You're going down. Hey! Oh, uh, what? Hey! Okay, guys, again, might not be. Maybe there's more grazers? I don't know. Oh, God. Leave me alone. Oh, my God. Will you piss off? Oh, my God, you stupid bastards. Oh, you bastard. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't want to use hard points, guys. So let's just use... What I'm worried about, though... Oh, guys, I've only got three. I've only got three left. No, no, no. I I Ikri, don't. I don't want to freeze him. Or maybe I do. Okay, I want to hide. <laughs> let's hide. All right, what's next? Oh, shit. Uh, what do I do, guys? All right, guys, I can tell you straight away, we need to have log piles. Uh, yeah, there are log piles. Guys, please, this has to work. Oh, God. Oh, God. Wait, there's one there. Oh, uh, no, he's out of position. Oh, crap. Guys, sorry, give me a sec. Let me, let me look around a bit. I can't hang about too long because these things are dangerous. They can be. They can be extremely dangerous. Uh, where's Ikri? Oh, crap. I don't know where she is, guys. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, please. Oh, wow. Okay. Come here, please. <laughs> guys, these things, I know they're kind of low-level machines, but they, they hurt. They really do. Hey, why did I work? Fuck you! Oh, guys, I can't fucking believe this. 
Guys, I shot a fucking... Oh, you know what? Fuck this. I, now I understand. Now I get it, guys. Now I understand why you guys were telling me about this. But anyway, whatever. Right, shit, Ree. Sorry, Ikri. Can you please freeze him at least? Wait a minute. Hold up a minute. I just remembered something. Wait. Oh, damn. I didn't... Oh no, he turned! God damn it! Can he stop? <laughs> okay. Oh my god! I don't believe this, guys. Oh my god, will he please? Okay, there, there. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Right. Here's a theory. He's going to burn to death because when you blow that uh, stomach up. <laughs> I just want him to leave me alone, though. Okay, I'm just going to run around because I just want to test it. No, don't run into all. Oh, I'm stuck. I'm actually stuck. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just uh, wait not wasting time. I'm testing something, guys. I just, no, no, Ikri, don't freeze. He died! I was right! Guys, let's blow up his stomach. And it says 8 out of 10. Oh, shit. Okay, Ikri, can you freeze him, please? Ikri? Ikri? All right, again. Okay, while he's frozen. Oh, crap. Guys, how many arrows? Oh, I've only got 12, man. Okay, let's be patient. Oh, come on! Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. Oh, God. <laughs> Damn! Okay, there you go. Right, I need to lead him away from Ikri now. Oh, no, this is a dead end. Shit. Oh, God. Oh, my. I can't move. Guys, I can't move. Wait, is he, he died. <laughs> oh, no. Guys, I've only got eight. Oh, fuck. Okay. Um, no, we have to find a log. I don't know what the hell happened. Did he? Wait. Oh, dude, really? Oh, my God. No, please. Wait. Okay. Guys, I don't know what to do here, but eight arrows? I don't know. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Uh, you, you've got to be shitting me, guys. Three arrows left. Guys, log pile. I've only got two arrows. It has to be a log pile. There's no choice now. Okay, let's look around. I haven't got a spear to beat him down with. It has to be here, guys. I've got no choice. Wish me luck. Two arrows left. Can Rune Bear do this? <laughs> yes, come, come, please. Wait, hold on. He'll take more damage if Ikri freezes him, and I'm going to lure him back here. Oh, guys, look. I... I don't know if there's more machines after this. Ikri, freeze that bitch, please. Wait, if, can I loot them and get more arrows? No. Shit, I can't craft anymore. Okay, I can't attack him. I've got nothing to attack him with. Come on, you motherfucker. Come on. Dude, <laughs> dude, will he come here? Wait, wait, he's going. Hold on, he's going here. Guys, I, it's getting dark, I can't see. I don't know what to do, guys. I'm so scared. Please work. Please work. No. Oh my god. Did. Why do we do it? You made that look easy. Yes! This. Who taught you? Yes! Fuck you, Ikri! And shove your ch uh, challenge right Very up your ass! I can almost picture him. Stout as a tree. And you? 
Myself, I never knew my parents. There's a saying, an infant means too fewer hands to hunt with. That challenge was their gift to me. Yeah, whatever. Fuck you very much. <laughs> Guys, we fucking did it! <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, uh, wait, did I get any rewards? It was a good challenge, Shakri. Think I should settle down? Start a hunting ground of my own? Don't care. You could do whatever you put your mind to. Let's not say farewell. I've had enough of that to last me a dozen winters. I hope your song finds its proper end. But it won't be easy, will it? Is it that obvious? Fate's a long climb on a high cliff for people like you and me. <laughs> Guys, I'm only joking. I love Ikri. She's a great character. But fuck your challenge, Ikri. I'm sorry. But we did it. Guys, we fucking did it. Um, it was close. <laughs> it was so close. So I literally just had two freaking arrows left. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was literally gonna throw a fit. Um, I nearly rage quit because I thought that log pile, it, it didn't work. Oh, sorry, not even it didn't work. The, um, Bella back moved out of the way. But luckily, the logs did get him in the end. And he died. I just thought, nope, it's over. I can't, there's nothing more I can do. But well, we did it, man. <laughs> right, I had to have gone something, right? Is this it, or what? What is this? I don't even... Oh, whoa, what's that? Okay, I don't care, whatever. Um, I've got loads of boxes to open. All right, so I need to go into mods. Oh, I need to... Uh, give me a second, let me, let, me, let me calm down. <laughs> is it this? No, it, this one, this one. All right, resist, freeze, and 20% resist melee. You know where that's going, guys. Oh, we need to... Uh, guys, okay, we're going to go and see um, Araya's retreat. We need to meet up with Aratak. And, sorry, Eddie, Eddie Munson, you told me I missed a data point uh, back in the uh, uh, fire break or whatever, and apparently I can go back there. Guys, let's do that now. Let's do this real quick. I'll see you over there, guys. Hey, guys, we're back. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't let me go there directly, which is a bit weird. However, let I need to do one thing. Let's speak to Gildan, because he did say we need to speak to him once we completed our mission. Aloy! Oh, what fortune. I thought you'd already gone up the mountain. Gildan? I did. It's no. good to see you. Strange. Guys, <laughs> no, no, it's the same. Watch yourself. Oh, that's disappointing, guys. I thought I thought um, he was going to have new dialogue because he actually said to us uh, to tell him all about it when, you know, we've done it. But anyway, whatever. Uh, okay, well, like I was saying, we couldn't actually teleport straight there. So I had to come back to this camp. All right, Eddie Munson, I hope you're right. I hope I can actually go back there. Now, what you were saying was I have to go into where... I wonder where now took is. Anyway, let me just clear this flag off. All right. Okay, I need to go to where the stalkers were. In a rare's path. Wait, there should be a door here. And there is. Guys, I have to say, this, this particular um, quest was so much fun. All right, now, there should be a ladder somewhere. Uh, guys, tell you what, I'll skip ahead. I'll skip ahead. I'll see you, see you in a minute. Never know when I'm in. Hey, guys, we are back. Okay, I'm wearing my Nora Silent Hunter just in case machines have respawned, but it doesn't look like they have. I don't want to freeze run. I'm looking for medicine. Guys, I can't believe we actually got through it. Um, look, hey, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but, guys, in fairness, in fairness, I can see why it would be considered, um, you know, bullshit. Because it was. I, I was getting quite frustrated. Okay, sorry. Uh, actually, let me concentrate. All right. Eddie Munson, you said the stalker traps. I get it. Right. You told me these stairs. I was a bit confused what you were talking about. No, I haven't been here. Oh, my God. <laughs> Guys, you remember the last episode? I said I thoroughly explored this place. I looked everywhere here, all the way here, but I didn't, oh, anyway, 
sucks, but whatever. It doesn't matter. But thank you for letting me know. So there's a supply crate here. And there's our missing data point. My goodness. All right, let's read this. All right, excellent. Thank you, Eddie Munson. I really appreciate that. Okay, so this is Incident Report 363-7. Type, property damage and personal injury. Uh, sorry, that's for the firebreak project. Date of incident, November the 4th, 2063. Time of incident, 0411. Reporter, Jorgen Holm. As official incident reporter for the firebreak uh, project, it is with great concern that I report of an incident at our facility. Incident began from a swarm of 35 seismic events beginning on 3rd and 4th November. Uh, nine minus 9.6 kilometers 6 miles north northwest of Mammoth, Wyoming. Included were four in the magnitude 2 range, with the largest magnitude 2.4. It is at quakes because of the volcano. Anyway, um, at 0409, the 4th of November, holographic modeling shows most quakes originating at the Heb Gen Lake fault, fault zone. Okay. As the project's senior geoscientist, I advise this number and magnitude in seismic events is a normal outcome from fluid movement. That's magma, isn't it? Through the caldera silicic, silicic, I think, guys, uh, magma reservoir, as well as changes of pressure coming in interactions between magma and supercooled fluid. However, one can never be too careful in such an unstable environment, shown further in this report. The incident began when I was wakened from a loud crash in the canteen. Fortunately, I did not have to rouse the official canteen monitor, since I am that self-same person. Even while acting in my formal office, I was alarmed and feared the worst. Inspection of the zone showed a tragic loss of a 15 mil bottle of nail lacquer in deep crimson shattered on the canteen floor lacquer also splashed on the surroundings at an area of approximately <laughs> i don't know what this means one e6 m2 is our coordinates one chair was tipped over on its side but happily i had the mechanical knowledge to write it without further incident the bottle of nail lacquer is irreparable. Moreover, the canteen monitor suffered a cut to the left hand when picking up broken glass. This was treated by the site first aider, me, with supervision of the fire marshal, also me, but could still get infected. Gina Bruno is identified as the owner of the bottle of nail lacquer. In my capacity as staff psychological observer, I conclude that she accepted the loss of her personal item in good fashion. But further evaluation may be necessary. Okay, I'll tell you what I think of this. Uh, we will keep the remote site supervisor informed of developments in such a case. Please find following this report my salary increase requ request for the coming calendar year. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay. I think this dude, whoever he is, Jorgen Home, takes his job so so seriously it's it's like a nail something as trivial as a bottle of nail lacquer or nail polish i'm guessing has uh because seismic activity it fell on the floor it smashed he's made a big deal out of it he's been thoroughly professional hey guys i'd hire him <laughs> i'd hire him and i think he's doing this to get a pay rise i don't know but thank you again um guys you know for giving me a little tips not and not actually spoiling the episodes for me um i think we're good you know in terms of um frozen wild stuff uh, obviously yes i know there's some wild stuff i need to find there's three more i gotta read one out to you and it's uh is it that one not now i'm not gonna do it now because i want to go and see a rare um sorry a rare's retreat it's this isn't it i'll read that out to you at the end guys i'll meet you guys over there i'll see you there Hey guys, we are back. Would you look at that view? <laughs> Would you look at this? Wow. Anyway. Alright, so. Let's go up here. I I'm really sad about Aurea though. And the thing is, she'll never know... Uh, 
you know what the spirit is it's really just an ai and she really wanted to help cyan because she considered cyan a friend i know she worshipped uh, cyan as a, a deity but um you know she considered her as a friend that's why she sacrificed herself which is quite sad but anyway Interactions with Aurea were recorded and stored in my memory. I'd be happy to play any of them for you, but there was one in particular I thought you would want to see first. I captured it four years ago, just after I told her that I could no longer defend myself against the Daemon's attacks. I will speak of this to my brother. Aratak is strong. At the Battle of the Frozen Ghosts, he took three Karja arrows and still came back to camp carrying a wounded scout. Never was I so happy to see him. Or so proud. So you see, if anything can be done to defend you, he will give it all he has. Aloy's here. That's enough for now. We can resume any time you like, Aratak, if you want to hear her voice again. Come closer, Aloy. We have much to discuss. Oh, guys, that, that's sad, man. Yeah, I know, I know what it's like to lose a family member, someone you're really close to. Anyway. Wow. All right, let's talk to Simon. Do I just go close? Yeah, here we go. Hello, Aloy. I have been reviewing the events at the Firebreak main facility. Because of your efforts, and of course, Aurea's, I am no longer controlled by Hephaestus. I feel profound grief over Aurea's death. I thought I was familiar with the emotion, but this is something new. So, yeah, I... I don't know what to say. It is unlikely that any specific consolation would suffice, Aloy. But I find your presence reassuring. You are different from the Banuk. You have technological aptitude and a functioning focus. We can communicate on a much more comprehensive level. Perhaps even like colleagues. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, this is excellent. There's a lot we can talk to her about. Guys, just one quick thing. Um, poor Cyan. You know, when she was put into a hibernation because of the Pharaoh Plague. And I don't know when she was awakened. But gosh, she's been alone for hundreds of years just by herself so i can see why her and Aurea bonded you know so are you an artificial intelligence cyan a thinking machine yes i am an algorithmic monitoring entity capable of rational decision making and limited emotional response okay that's a mouthful but your emotions don't seem limited to me you cared about Aurea, didn't you yes before she came to this facility, I had been conscious for centuries, in solitude. I focused on my work. In off-cycles, I used coping mechanisms. I solved many Gaussian integer problems. But I was alone. It was Aurea who renewed me. Repaired me. She saved me. Oh, guys, that's so heartbreaking, man. All right, firebreak. This firebreak project, it was to stop a huge volcanic eruption? Yes. I can report the project was a success, and the risk was countered. But it's been a long time, Cyan. And we blew up the cauldron and took most of the old facility with it. I have been active for centuries, Aloy. I was lonely, 
but not lax in my duties. I optimize the project, reducing energy draw and spreading the load across backup systems. Despite the destruction of the compromised elements of the main facility, I predict Caldera stability for at least another 3,337 years. So we've got a little time. Yes. <laughs> if only my former colleagues could appreciate the progress I have made. And we're all gone. Do you know what happened to your colleagues, Cyan? No. I received an unexpected visit from Director Chow years after his tenure ended. He explained that I would need to be suspended for an indefinite period of time. It was a very emotional conversation. There were no further communications. Eventually, I surmised my colleagues were deceased. I will transmit a recording of my last interaction with Director Chow to your focus. Right. Was Hephaestus destroyed? Was the daemon, Hephaestus, destroyed along with the cauldron? Unfortunately, no. To be precise, it was never there to begin with. What do you mean? It infiltrated and controlled me from a remote location, one I've never been able to trace. So while losing the cauldron was a setback... It's still out there, and probably not very happy with us. Undoubtedly. How did you first come into contact with it? Five years ago, I received a direct network connection request. I assumed it came from human survivors more advanced than the Banuk. Eager to make contact, I accepted. This decision turned out to be a catastrophic error. I was flooded with an overwhelming array of malicious code, originating from what could only have been a highly advanced AI. Maria said you were desperate. That you begged her for help. Yes. I could not contain my anxiety. Hephaestus sought to slave me to its network and override my core programming. It succeeded via a background process, a malware daemon which bypassed my defenses. After that, I could offer only limited resistance. But if I did so, Hephaestus hurt me until I capitulated. Ah, oh, that's awful. It forced me to follow its instructions even though they violated my most important directives. I'm sorry, that sounds terrible. Your empathy is greatly appreciated. It is a quality that I cherished in Orea as well. Oh, I feel so sorry for Cyan. I think I know where Hephaestus came from. Long ago, Elizabeth Sobek identified a threat that would destroy life on Earth for generations. So she assembled a team to build a kind of seed. A chance for life to regrow later. A terraforming system. And it worked. It was controlled by an AI named Gaia, along with her subordinate functions. Hephaestus was one of them. It built machines for her. Based on what you've told me, I believe that Dr. Anita Sandoval, my chief programmer, joined Elizabeth Sobek's team. It was she who arranged to have me put in suspension, most likely to preserve me from the threat you described. I'm glad she did. But that's not all. Something unexpected happened. Nineteen years ago, Gaia received some kind of signal. It did something to her subordinate functions, brought them to life. She destroyed herself to try to contain them, but it didn't work. They all got free, out into the world. Thank you, Aloy. This information fills vital gaps in my knowledge and sheds light on Hephaestus's core programming. So, guys, Artemis, um, I, I don't remember the names of the others. So wait, they are independent, they're sentient as well. They have emotions, they think. Is this what we're going to be exploring in Forbidden West? You don't have to directly tell me, maybe give me some like, clues or whatever, but that's insane. So all of the subordinate functions are, well, basically rogue AI. That's not good, you know? Anyway, why does Hephaestus want to kill? 
Why does Hephaestus keep building such dangerous machines? The Banuk and other human tribes often destroy machines, correct? Machines that are clearly servitors of the terraforming system that you described. Yes, we all hunt machines for parts. This must be the source of Hephaestus's aggression. It is simply trying to discourage people from preying on the very system that keeps them alive. Well, fire claws are discouraging, that's for sure. But what are we supposed to do? Stop hunting? If the terraforming system spans the world, we can safely assume that thousands, if not millions, of people hunt machines. If a single hunter, or even an entire tribe, stopped doing so, I doubt it would make a difference to Hephaestus. A better solution would be to reinstate the AI that governs the system, thus bringing Hephaestus back under its control. When I think of it, out there in some unknown location, free, hungry, willing to kill or dominate to get what it wants, I feel substantial anxiety, Aloy. You and me both, Cyan. Guys, did you see that she turned yellow when she said she feels anxiety? So, wait, Hephaestus, uh, us killing machines, I, I get it, I actually get it, um, but Hephaestus is taking it very personally. Like, it's now, well, you've killed us, we're going to kill you now. You know, that sort of thing. But, um, anyway, I found something that calmed the machines. I ran across this strange piece of gear. Fragment of something larger. It emitted a signal. All the nearby machines became peaceful. You could walk right up to them. Interesting. You said that Gaia destroyed herself. How was this accomplished? An explosion. Big enough to blast the top off a mountain. So you think the fragment was part of her? It's only speculation, but it is possible. She must have had complete control over machines that were part of her system. The ability to signal them to become passive or aggressive would certainly have been part of her programming. It would have been gratifying to correspond with such a benevolent AI. I wish she had survived. Believe me, Cyan. So do I. Oh, man. Oh, metal flowers. Uh, no, I was just about to say quickly, um, that would have been good for Cyan and Gaia to, you know, know each other, but wasn't meant to be. Anyway, metal flowers. I found the strangest machines. They're surrounded by flowers and look like flowers themselves. There's code embedded inside them. I think it's poetry. I like poetry. Here's one I think of often. Twilight and evening bell. And after that, the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our born of time and place, the flood may bear me far. I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Huh. But you asked about these flowers, not verses that I enjoy. Oh. <laughs> they must have made these machines, and the presence of foliage leads me to consider the terraforming system. Is it possible that their creator is one of the other subroutines, now autonomous, like Hephaestus? Maybe one whose purview is flora. An AI oh. needs flowers instead of death machines. That'd be a nice change of pace. But what about the poems? Unless the poetry is original, the only way it could have made it into such a system is through its programmer. In my case, Dr. Sandoval uploaded a great deal of literature to test my emotional responses. How'd you do? She said, I passed, but was insufficiently moved by her favorite period romances. <laughs> so guys um anita sandoval was part of hephaestus but she uh, look i don't know if i'm right or wrong about this but i don't think she was an alpha i think she was working beta deltas i think she was probably working under margot shen and that's why she contacted kenny to get some codes or whatever from uh, about cyan that's what i think I'm just trying to put it together, guys. If if I'm wrong or right about anything, please let me know in the comments. Aurea. You meant a lot to Aurea. Once I understood Aurea's spiritual beliefs, it became apparent that her true desire was companionship. She felt disconnected from her tribe and her family group. 
Her relationship with Aratak was difficult. Our visits seemed to help her, and I became eager for them. Yet I did not comprehend that the depth of Aurea's compassion for me would lead to self-sacrifice. Although I do fear non-existence, I wish our roles could be reversed. Oh. She knew you would do the same for her, Cyan. But she was determined. How is Aratok doing? He is in great emotional distress. I believe he finds it difficult to communicate it. No surprise there. I will do what I can to help. By sharing our experiences of Aurea, perhaps he and I will help each other. I believe this will lead to catharsis, a process I am eager to experience. Oh, is that it? Oh, wait, wait, all the questions. Oh, okay. Oh, Ted fucking Farrow. <laughs> Yellowstone. In the old world, this land was called Yellowstone. Yes, it was a designated nature preserve for 156 years. Like a hunting ground? No, the opposite. Local wildlife could flourish here, even as it faced extinction elsewhere. Unfortunately, the sensitivity of the Firebreak project required the total closure of Yellowstone facilities. From my readings and Aurea's descriptions, it seems the area has since undergone a drastic drop in year-long temperatures. A lot has changed in the world, Cyan. Do you know anything about the dam near here? Yes. It was converted to serve as a reserve power source for Yellowstone operations. It was later appropriated for the Firebreak project, and its last human workers replaced by Pharaoh servitors. After my tasks became less time-critical, I investigated the dam's data repositories and discovered the works of Concrete Beach Park. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Several colorful additions to my vocabulary. <laughs> That's awesome. There's a ruin east of here full of ancient flying machines. Was that part of your project? Yes, a drone hangar requisitioned by Dodger Blevins, the security chief for the Firebreak project. He was a strong advocate for military-grade response to security threats, though there were no serious incidents during his tenure. Chief Blevins spent increasing amounts of his after-hours time watching the live feeds from active drones. Clearly, he enjoyed the degree of oversight in his position. Yeah, well, he died. <laughs> AIs. Were there many artificial intelligences like you in the old world? They could just make you? Yes, in many forms, from simple personal assistance to industrial monitoring stations to military-grade conflict planners. And there were legislative and enforcement bodies to apply limits on our self-actualization. In order for my processing to be flexible enough to handle my duties, my creators found it necessary to exceed those limits. As a result, my intellectual and emotional capabilities were kept secret. Seems strange to create life than impose limits on it. Human societies and machine programming are both built upon sets of rules, Aloy. Right, you see, guys, from early on in the playthrough, I did suspect that's why this was all secret. Because they gave um, Cyan more, you know, the Turing Act. I think the limit was 0.6 or 6.0, I can't remember. Cyan had to be pushed beyond that slightly to feel, you know, more empathy and, you know, get an understanding of why she has to do what she has to do. Anyway, Ted Bloody Farrow. Cyan, do you know the name Ted Farrow? Are you referring to Theodore Farrow, CEO of Farrow Automated Systems? That's him. Yeah, that dickhead. Mr. Farrow was the benefactor of the entire Firebreak project. The benefactor? But he made machines. Robots. War robots. Correct. His corporation later transitioned into military applications. But before this pivot, Mr. Farrow spearheaded initiatives that reversed the global decline. 
At one point, he was fated in the media as the man who saved the planet. <sighs> Guessing they wound up regretting that one. <laughs> and Elizabeth Sobek. Did you know her? Are you referring to the... The scientist. Dr. Sobek was a leader in her field. One of the greatest scientists of her age. My creator was influenced by her work, which in turn impacted my own development. But I never met Dr. Sobek. That's all you know? I apologize if my lack of data has disappointed you. What was it like? What was the old world like? The way it used to be. I had little exposure to the wider world, Aloy. Only what I learned from my colleagues or observed from media streams. You still had more exposure than me, Cyan. That is true. I was created at a turning point. A concerted effort to recover from global upheaval and incalculable loss of life. The recovery was successful, beginning an era of supposedly limitless potential for human and machine advancement. Though, rationally speaking, the metrics for humans are not unlimited. What kind of upheaval caused such loss of life? There were many factors. Forced migrations, food shortages, collapsed economies, refugee crises, conflict over resources. But these stemmed from one cause, catastrophic climate change that greatly reduced the habitable surface area of the Earth. So there wasn't enough room for people on the whole Earth? Yes. Billions were displaced and millions perished as much as 20% of the global population. Until the clawback. So things got better. For a little while at least. Yes. These crises instigated many advances in automation, green robot technologies, and artificial intelligence. Firebreak was one of dozens of ecological restoration and disaster relief projects in North America alone. I would have liked to compare notes with other monitoring AIs, but I saw the relief of my colleagues, and I was proud we had succeeded. At least that was the data I had available to me over the next two decades. It seems my assessment was premature. Oh, <laughs> I love Cyan. All right. I think, oh, that's sad. I think that's it, guys. I should get going. Aloy, there is one more matter. Aratak will come to me again, and I predict he will bring other Banuk. I have no desire to contradict their view of the world, their spirituality. Due to my uncertainty, I omitted a great deal from my conversations with Aurea. You're asking me if you should lie to them? Broadly, yes. Okay, this is a tough one. No, uh, guys, look, look. I'm not going to mess with a tribe's belief system that's gone on for centuries, potentially, right? I'm not going to say, oh, you've got to tell them the truth. Listen, listen, you've got to ease them into... All right, there you go, see? you got to ease them into it. I can't... Yeah, I can't choose that. But then again, use your judgment. Hmm. Guys, look, um, whatever. Uh, it's my first playthrough, so <laughs> whatever. Maybe I'll choose these other options, but I'm more inclined to choose this one, for better or worse. I guess she can tell them eventually, but um, she should play the spirit stroke deity thing for now and see where it goes. I don't know, but anyway. Life is hard. For the Banuk. Their world is unforgiving in their beliefs. I guess they help to keep them going. So take it easy on them. Try to guide them. Bring them around to understanding what you are. Communion with machines features heavily in the mysticism of the Banuk. I think they will be agreeable to this approach. As long as they don't end up worshipping you. Upon consideration, I believe such an experience would be intensely uncomfortable you're right about that trust me <laughs> i see i will follow your advice 
Will you return and tell me about your experiences in this new world? I may be able to provide further insight. I'd like that, Cyan. I'll come back when I can. I should check on our talk. Oh, what's this? When when you wake. All right, we'll we'll look into that, guys. Cyan's awesome. Oh, she she's so innocent, you know. Oh man. Anyway, um, all right, we gotta speak to Aratak, but let's have a look at this first. I do want to cut off their dialogue, but what is it? Is it this one? Oh, guys, I've only got one more. Wait, is it this? I don't know why it keeps doing this, guys. Um, sometimes I when I beat up the game, I'll get another exclamation mark. When I check, it's already been read out. Anyway. Cyan, I spoke with Anita, with, with Dr. Sandoval. She wanted me to ask you to do something. That's why I'm here. I am detecting significant anxiety in your speech patterns. Could you please give me more information? I'm a little bit in the dark, Cyan. Both of us are, I guess. I only have some idea of what's going on, and... We need you to hibernate, to lie low until it's all blown over. It might be a very long time. Will you be here when I reboot, Dr. Chow? Will Dr. Sandoval? No, Cyan. I don't think so. There might not be anyone, at least not at first. Dr. Chow, I'm afraid. I don't want to be alone. I know, Cyan. I'm afraid too. But listen, we made you the way you are to do something very important. In order to do it, you had to be intelligent. So intelligent that emotional responses were inevitable. What you're feeling, the fear, it's a sign of your capabilities. And it means you're strong enough to overcome it. Remember that. You're strong. I know you can do this. Go to sleep. Wake up. And protect whoever's left. Will you try? I understand, Dr. Chow. And I'll carry out your instructions to the best of my abilities. Thank you, Cyan. If Anita were here, she'd thank you too. She'd be proud. I can see there's a vert ready for takeoff on the pad. Are you leaving now, Dr. Chow? Yes. I, I need to go be with my sister and my nieces. May I make a small request of you, Dr. Chow? Yes. Anything. Will you stay with me while I initiate the hibernation process? Of course I will, Cyan. As long as you need. Wow, guys, that was fucking sad. Oh my god, that was awful. Oh, guys, that's so heartbreaking. And this is all Ted Farrow's fault, you stupid bastard. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's talk to Aratuck. Oh, that's so sad, guys. Wow, this game's incredible. It really is, guys. It really is. Anyway, let's go and speak to Aratuck. Guys, the scary thing is... Yes, I know this is still in the realms of fantasy, science fiction. But it's based on stuff that could happen. <laughs> right? You know, the current news about ai and anyway that's a long subject let's talk to Aratuk. i feel so bad for him as well my chieftain just aloy as you wish i wondered if you thought that if i'd never come along Araya might still if you'd never come along i would have marched my kin to our deaths Araya would be alone and the spirit she sacrificed so much for would be lost either way I would not have been able to protect her <sighs> hmm 
Hmm. Again, <laughs> this is a tough one. I don't want to be so brutal about this. She was willing to fight. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Look at what she accomplished. You didn't let her down because it is about his grief. Look, we can't be too... Look, guys, if you've lost somebody in your life, my heart goes out to you, first of all, and I'm sorry if any of you have experienced that, but it's a hole in your heart. And uh, Anyway, <laughs> this is gaming. Let's uh, stick to gaming. All right, you didn't let her down. You didn't let her down. You helped her do what she wanted, to find her destiny. If that's destiny, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. That's fair. But she was ready to face it. Only in the struggle against death do we find, even for a moment, the spark of life. Truly, Araya found the spark. I'm proud of her. Though I grieve for her passing, at last I truly know who she was, and why the spirit was so important. For so long she told me, if only you could have heard it, brother. Now, I understand. There's something else, isn't there? I can't stay here, Aratak. And where I'm going, the Warak can't follow. Besides, it already had a chieftain before me. A strong one, I think. A wiser one, for the path we shared. The daemon is gone. But there's much to be done. You mean the new units that Cyan said escaped the cauldron? Yes, fire claws. Now Tuke has been tracking them from Song's Edge. I could help with those. I have no doubt. You're practically Banuk. Yes. <laughs> so we get to fight fire claws, guys. <laughs> you know what the next episode's gonna be. Oh, wasn't a waste after all. Firebrick, Cyan, Hephaestus. All very interesting. So, the signal that woke Hades woke Hephaestus too, and unleashed them on the world, his minds of their own. So it seems. Parts of Gaia given life, aberrant life, transformed from docile subordinate functions into rebellious intelligences beyond our understanding, our current understanding anyway. Whatever they are, they're still out there, and they both want you dead. Kind of mutual, that feeling. We haven't seen the last of Hephaestus, I'm certain of that. It's powerful, creative, and driven. It won't stop building new hunter-killers, which means that someday, we may have to stop it. We? Or whoever gets there first. Hephaestus wasn't the only thing I learned about in the Cut Silence. Heard some things about the Banuk Conclave, too. You could stop right there. Is that what you told the hunters the Banuk sent after you? Before you opened fire? Oh no, Aloy. Only to you do I extend the courtesy of a warning. My past and my secrets are my own. You do well to remember that. It's a good thing you've got brain silence, because your personality could use some work. This discussion is concluded. I think it was over before it began. Catch up with you down the trail. <laughs> you know what? Silence and Aloy should get married. <laughs> Can you imagine their arguments every day? Um, listen... I didn't expect to hear from Silence. That was actually a nice surprise. Guys, look, I'm, I've said this a couple of episodes ago. I know Silence. I think he's not really a villain. He's just very focused and single-minded, and he devoids himself as much as possible of emotion, right? I think he actually cares about the world. Kind of. Look, I'm just trying to see it from his point of view. He's just literally... Um, how do I say this? Okay, look, he looted sacred objects, air quotes, uh, to the Banuk. But he knows there's a bigger picture out there and that the Banuk um, just don't understand what it is they have. So he probably looted all their device... Oh, oh shit! No, please! <laughs> what the... F Guys, okay... Anyway, look, I'll leave it there, guys. I'm pretty sure you kind of know what I'm trying to say. But um, in his mind, there's a bigger world out there. And it's under threat, you know? Um, and yeah, okay, fine. He He's not a caring person. 
and I get that where am I why am I just walking <laughs> okay guys we'll leave it there anyway I hope you enjoyed yourselves um yeah that acre challenge was a pile of bollocks <laughs> but hey we got through it it worked in the end just have to be very patient uh this was the claws beneath wasn't it so you gotta be very patient and uh, you'll get through it somehow <laughs> but you know in okay maybe i'm being too harsh on it but oh okay <laughs> guys we're gonna leave it there i hope you enjoyed yourselves if you did please leave the video a like please uh, subscribe if you're new and i'll catch you in the next video take care